Hi guys and welcome to today's live feed. I thought today I'd do something a little bit different. I'm over at the shop waiting to uh, meet a fellow here uh, to do some business this morning, but this is an occasion for me to show you something cool that came in yesterday. Now, people find all sorts of things in basements and yard sales and sometimes even in the trash. A gentleman came in who found a scrapbook that um, family no longer wanted and uh, I ended up buying it. And my job with these things is to try and find someone who's gonna cher cherish it and love it as much as the original owner probably intended to uh, and find a good home for it. So it's really cool. Um, we're gonna go through it together and I'll show you just what it is. So here we go. I'm gonna flip this around and uh, I'm filming this live. This is not gonna be edited later on. So there's no fancy music or anything like that. So you have to bear with me as I do this live feed today as we look through a really cool scrapbook. Okay, so let's just tuck that away for now. And by the way, somebody sent me that general store book. I've been reading it. That's very nice. I won't name names on camera, but that's a really nice gesture. But this is the scrapbook here. So very simple cardboard piece. And you see the name Charlie Cooney up at the top. And as I'm going through, there's a couple other things. There's, you know, a couple, uh, I imagine these are racers. Speed Robertson, probably learn a little bit about him, but those were unrelated to the scrapbook. These are all postcards. So when it was brought in to me at first, it was kind of just told that, you know, it's some old postcards. But what's interesting is that when you take them out of the little corners and you flip it over, you can see the, the date, London, 1941. It says, Dear Charlie, just a line to say hello. Hope you like the card, as I have 11 more to send you. Hope you're doing your best at school. Hope to be home soon. Why don't you write? Love, Dad. And so Dad has joined the Air Force. And Dad, as it turns out, shares the same name as his son. His name was also Charles Cooney. And he was uh, in the Royal Canadian Air Force. And all these little cards. So he was thinking of his son. He's overseas. He's, he's um, part of the Battle of Britain. And he's uh, in, in the Air Force. And so he starts sending his son these little cards. Just a little one. Love to you and Mom. And another one here. So these are all right from World War II. So there's a dive bomber. So love Poi. So that must have been a nickname that he had for his kid. And there's some little stamps and things like that. And these sorts of scrapbooks sometimes can get overlooked by, by family members. We look at this one here. That looks like a Catalina. Oh, no, it's a Sunderland flying boat. Catalinas look kind of similar. So in the back, Dear Charlie and Mom, just a, sign, uh, just a line to say hello, um, greetings, uh, I wish I was only home again, uh, I like my new plane uh, just fine, but do not know any of the boys. So I guess he got, uh, he got posted with a new, uh, a new crew and didn't know any of the guys just then, so he was probably learning them. And you can see there, uh, Canadian Air Force. And it's gone through the field regiment office. And you can actually trace some of these things back. Now, what's interesting is that sometimes when they would write things like somewhere in England, you'd see that on the last card it said London. So he could say where he was. And this one, it says somewhere in England because, of course, it was very private. Um, but some people would send letters. And the first letter of each sentence might spell out the name of the place they were. So they would try and send secret little coded messages. I didn't see that being the case here. Uh, and he's really worried about his son at school. How is school going? How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, please send regards to mom for me. Love, dad. And it's gone through 1942. So, of course, at that time, he's in England. That was the height of World War II. And there's little things like this. This is a photo of a guy that got lost. So a friend of his that was lost in battle. And I was taking time to, to look at these. Every single one has a little story on the back, you know, things that are going going on. Um, he, he said he's seeing lots of these flying around. He said, it's far better to be a pilot here. I, I guess it, um, you know, that was his perspective. He said, it's far better to be a pilot. And uh, I think if you were part of those bombing missions, I don't think you would want to be on the ground when that's happening. Now, this one he sends to his son. And he says it's a Blenheim Bombers from the Field Regiment office and Canadian office. And he says, uh, this will give you an idea of what the bombers are doing over here. Say hello to mom for me. <laughs> and this, being a dad, this breaks my heart, you know. I, I hate being away from my family. 
And these poor boys, you know, anybody who serves has to spend time away from the family. It's very difficult. But this is what he was experiencing. He had these cards. And uh, it's more than just a postcard. This man was living these events. I'm going to put it back in its little corners there. And it, at the time, everything, including everything from bubblegum, uh, tobacco, this was Daily Mail tobacco, they would put these little tobacco cards in there. And it was of great interest to, to kids back home to see what types of planes were over there. They used to sell cards that were plane spotting cards, so you knew what to look for. Um, this one, Victory Bubblegum, and then showing some of the, the ships. And this one, HMS Revenge. So he says on the back, this is one, he said, first he says, this is the battleship that convoyed us. But he said it's one of the battleships. So he was on this ship. He was on the HMS Revenge. And uh, he said, this is one that convoyed us all over. Um, hoping to hear from you soon. Uh, from, and then he says, from my next um, place. So he doesn't know where he's headed at this point. He's probably on the ship. Probably got the postcard from the ship. And, uh, and sent it back home. So he was on that during the Second World War. And it makes you kind of wonder, why why would anybody give up, you know, family? But I suppose some people don't have children and, and they don't find a home for this, so it ends up with me. I would, If this was my grandpa's, I would never give this up. Hope you're all fine, as this card leaves me okay. Right soon. From the field office. What was interesting about this fellow, who I believe that's him right there, there's also some uh, government pictures that were included with this lot too. And so they had uh, taken some stills, probably um, either press release stills or pictures that they took of them doing, um, I, likely this looks like Canada, so probably practice missions or a um, person could look up the, uh, the tailwing. Now there's a guy who looks like he's just happily rappelling down a cliff face, but I, I was really intrigued by the type of gear they were using. You know, the, the way that he's got himself um, spiked off or tied off there and he just wrapped around his leg and kind of around his back and a knife at the hip at the ready in case he has to cut loose. And that's uh, that's the plane they were in at that time. Not sure if that's a DC-3. It, it has the look of a DC-3, but somebody who's more knowledgeable in, uh, in photography. But look at that. I mean, somebody would have had been flying very close to get this picture to that plane, close enough that you can see the guy right in the in the bay door there. But you can still look up the, the tail numbers on these, KG568. Somebody does some research, you'll be able to see exactly where this plane was, what happened with it. Um, was it was it shot down or lost? And uh, I was going through the pictures, them jumping, you know, gathering up their gear. And for people who um, are trying to figure out what uniforms look like and how they dress, these are really interesting things to see. He's on his uh, radio set there. But yeah, these are all Canadian military pictures. There they are. Uh, now, the reception maybe wasn't that great. Maybe they're talking to each other. <laughs> Sometimes I see people on their cell phones and I wonder if they're actually just talking to each other. Um, so really, really interesting. You know, there's the planes going overhead. Of course, them landing. I see that that looks like it's, that looks like our mountains. Where I live, we have the Rocky Mountains not too far away. And... They did uh, rescue missions. So what this fellow did is um, uh, Charles Cooney was in the RCAF. He was a, um, a skydiver. Um, so he would jump out of planes. Um, not many people know I think that the roots of even some biker gangs like the Hells Angels came from a lot of guys who were pilots or skydivers or in the military and started up um, you know clubs like that after the war. But this fellow was a skydiver. And they would go into remote locations and bring people back. So there they are you know, on a recovery mission, bringing somebody back. If you look him up online, you're going to see a story that says um, they dove in. And what was interesting, actually, right there, I think, they had a woman who was part of their team. That lady right there, that was really unusual during wartime. And I can't recall her name offhand. Um, but what was different about that is that... Um, they would fly in, and the reason that she was with them, yeah, and there she is. I didn't know I had a picture of her right there. Um, they did a story on her. They, I think they called it the blonde who jumped from planes. She was a skydiver as well, but she was a nurse. So I'm going to try and hold the camera a little bit steadier here. I think I probably zoomed in a little bit, so I'm going to zoom out so it's a little steadier. 
So that lady right there, um, whose name escapes me, but I'll have to look it up online and find, she was part of their crew. She was a nurse, and she would uh, jump off the planes with the crew. And I guess uh, it was really uncommon at that time to have uh, a female part of the, um, the, the Air Corps. And uh, a lot of folks, when they were being saved, were just shocked. They, they hadn't, you know... Um, they they were surprised to see that a nurse was jumping from an airplane. Different times, of course, you know, things aren't quite like that now. But, um, you know, really cool to see the picture of her right there, you know. And uh, there was a story in a magazine written about her and this crew. So it's a really, really interesting lot and a really cool part of history. And these are the sorts of things I love getting in. Now, this wasn't, uh, you know... It, it was just the sort of thing that had to be saved. And maybe I'm just, you know, being sentimental. But when I see things like this come through, I just, it's so special and so unique. You, you hope that something like this will end up finding its way to a museum because it is a really cool part of history and an important part of history. Um, this was in with it as well, which I think is the uh, is a victory scarf. So you see our our allies, America, Russia, England, and France. There we are. And it says victory. So this was all together at the same time. Mighty Canada is not on here, but I guess I actually under it is because we were we were part of the United Kingdom, you know. Um, so we would have been under that banner, under the British flag. That's our flag that we flew, flew the Union flag in Canada up until 1967. So when you see the uh, the British flag, that was our flag too. Same with Australia and New Zealand and many other Commonwealth countries. But just a really unique bit of history that came through today that I kind of wanted to share with you. So now the, the trick is really just to find a good home for these items. Uh, June Callwood. I'm not sure if that was her name. There is a story. If you look up um, Charles Cooney on Google, and I wish I could do it right now and wasn't talking to you, I could tell you. Um, there's a story, and I think it's called The Blonde Who Jumps From Planes. And you can read it, and you can see that he's quoted in there. <laughs> and uh, somebody says, uh, is that a female voice that I hear? Because they're off in the bush. Uh, they were actually recovering a U.S. Uh, pilot that had crashed. And um, that was part of the story that's there. So anyway, if you have time, look it up. It's an interesting read. And, um, you know, they were pretty shocked and, uh, and, and grateful that they got the support. Yeah, the blonde who leaps from the clouds. That's it right there. So these interesting little stories come through our shop all the time. And sometimes it can be something as simple as a little scrapbook. But for me, it's that connection to history, knowing that a person who was part of that event um, wound up, you know, giving this scrapbook to their kid who probably passed or passed along to someone else. And now here it is in my shop. You know, something like this, you don't put these out individually. You don't, you know, this, this has to be kept together. And um, the goal for me right now on that is to contact um, a local museum and see if perhaps they might be interested in, and uh, get it off to them. But um, that's what I love about this business. I love finding things. I love um, rediscovering history and taking things that people thought was trash. Um, that book that I got from the 1700s from, um, from the uh, Irish Lord, that was you know, at a garage sale that he never sold. So you never know when these things are going to come through your way too. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you today. Thank you guys so much for watching our little live feed. Um, you know, definitely uh, check out the story online. Um, it was actually the family members that brought it in. They didn't want it. Sometimes they get to the end of the run um, and uh, they sell it to someone or they just, you know, they don't have anybody to leave it to. Uh, and I think that my, my responsibility with this, somebody was asking, could it go back to the family? Um, Sometimes people don't have children or, or people to give it to, so they bring it into a shop like mine, and then you have a, a, a debate. You could either sell it or you can try and get it into a museum. So I'm going to reach out to a, a contact I have at the museum, and uh, I think something like that should be archived and kept t intact and together because it's a really cool story. But uh, thank you guys all so much for tuning in today. Um, try and keep these vlogs somewhat interesting for you, and um, I hope you have a fantastic uh, holiday season too. So we'll see you all soon and uh, have a great day and bye for now.